Hi everybody, I'm Courtney Cooper. I am a five-star event rider. I am the owner of Sea Square Farm with my lovely husband, Neil, who is actually doing the videotaping today. And I'm a partner in Excel Star Sport Horses. And today what we're gonna talk about is goal setting. Uh, personal, professional, riding, um, living goals, all of the things that um, are important to you. And so to that end, um, we'd love to have your questions. Um, we'd like this to be very interactive. Um, we'd like to hear where you're watching from and what some of the things that are important to you are. So please feel free to write in and uh, we'll go from there. So in talking, you'll hear background noise. We're out in the, a beautiful day here in Aiken. Um, we're sitting in front of our main barn and then we have the tent behind Neil. So I'm sure you'll hear whinnies and kicking walls and all the sort of things that you hear with the barn. And then we'll take a little um, walk down our barn aisle at the end. So I do goal setting, um, major goal setting once a year. And usually sort of in that December, January timeframe when I have a little bit of downtime, um, I try to look back and see what I did last year. And um, I also look at things quarterly as I go along and then when certain events happen, um, but more on that later. But to that end, in terms of looking at goals, early on in my career, I was introduced um, to a program that I've adapted on my Google Docs. And um, so we printed one out. We're happy to uh, email these to people if they're interested. Um, but basically, it um, starts with, you know, just usually some quotes about what some themes that I want to be um, for the year. Um, this one, you know, being vulnerable, not being afraid to fail, um, and to sort of put yourself out there, and then to be resilient. And I think that all of this mess with COVID has really taught people uh, to live in the moment and um, not take anything for granted. And so that's what we've been trying to do, and that's been a real um, focus of what's going on in our lives personally. So. Um, in terms of how one does this and how we have done goal setting, um, we're just going to walk you through here. Um, and I think it's important to um, do things like know your balance sheet, know your assets, and know your debts, and know your net worth. And people are like, well, I don't have any of those things. Well, you know, that's fine. Um, you know, you need to know where you are right now and these things will change. And the thing about goal setting that I think is very important is for people to have things written down or in a spreadsheet or in a document that you can um, refer to later because it's very easy to sort of say things aren't going great and then um, maybe do a little reflection of five years ago and where you were five years ago. and. Oftentimes you'll find that you hit some major goals and major milestones and you didn't sort of focus on that. And it's very easy in the moment to get um, dragged down in the minutia of life. But if you're trying to do goal setting, if you're trying to think sort of bigger and broader and you know what's important to you, it, it does help and it also helps you just to keep in focus. Any questions, Neil? No, several people watching, but no questions yet. Okay, well guys, feel free to always ask questions. So then, um, based on that, and based on what's important to people, and based on where we're gonna go, the important thing is to talk about past achievements. Um, and you can see that there are lots of sheets on this. Hi, Nugget. Um, there, there are 50 lines on here. And, you know, these can be minor, major, um, what are important to you. You know, a lot of times, um, what doesn't seem- um, Hi, sweetie important in the moment that turn out to be really important things that you've achieved. Um, I, I have always worked on my ability uh, to talk to people and interact with people and um, that's really been something that I have um, struggled with in different ways and so um, that's something that I'm proud of that I've continued to to um, TED Talks and, and try to find ways of relating to people better. And so that's went on my past achievements. Um, so once we do that, and, and this is something that can be done 
done over the course of time and in terms of um, you know some days you might be thinking that you know just working through it hi Reese Reese, Reese has a doctor's appointment, so she has to leave. Um, so the other thing that we do is uh, we talk about goals. Um, and you can see this actually didn't get changed to 2021, but that's okay. You can imagine that. Um, Horse-related goals. Um, and these can be, oh, shoot, minor, major. We'll have to get that later. Um, minor, major um, from, you know, finding people to share your dreams and new owners and supporters to... Um, being able to push the trot or to be able to sit the trot without stirrups. Those are all important things and not necessarily um, things that just because they're not huge big goals don't make them um, less important. And so you can see we have 30 of those. Then we have um, business and school goals. Um, you can see I started this back when I was in university and so um, it was important for me to have um, university goals, to, like to graduate, um, because I was fortunate enough for my parents to pay for school, um, but they said four years and that was it. So um, that was a goal of mine, and to get a degree. Um, and then business goals, where you want to, to see them go. And so when you're setting goals, um, it, it doesn't matter how big they are or how small they are, just that they have some importance uh, to you. Any questions yet, Neil? Not yet. Come on, guys. Interact with me. Tell me what your questions are. Um, then we go to personal goals. Um, and these obviously change and develop as you get older. Um, you know, one of mine was to get married, and which I did, um, and to have a home. And um, we're lucky to have, you know, a couple of homes now, which seems a little odd, to be honest, um, and exciting. But uh, so you talk about your personal goals. And like I said, it, it is very helpful sometimes to reflect back on these things because um, you can sort of see where you are going. And they did a study at Harvard um, years ago. And what they found was that if you write down your goals, that you are 80% um, more likely to attain those goals. If you talk about your goals and um, speak to them and give someone um, your goals and sort of be it a significant other or someone else, you're 40% more likely um, to reach those goals. Um, and then if you actually just think about them and don't tell anybody, um, you're about 20% able to reach those goals. So a big deal is if you can write them down and if you can share them with people. Um, hi, Nugget. And so, um, then we start going out on goals in terms of in five years, in 10 years, and in a lifetime. And like I said, these don't necessarily have to be big rocket goal things, but they might be. I mean, some people want to climb Mount Everest. I have no desire to do that. Some people want to jump out of planes. I have no desire to do that. But a lot of times people think that would be fun and exciting. Um, and you don't know when your time is up in this world. And so if there are things you want to do and they're important to you, um, you should try to figure out a way to do them. Um, on that note, in terms of writing goals, um, one of my clients said, well, you could talk about the mandatory elig eligibility requirements that have been discussed and how that affects your goal setting. And they did table that rule, but in terms of deciding, for example, when you're going to move up a horse um, or a rider and, you know, saying, oh, I want to be going preliminary by the end of the year, or I want to go advanced, or what, all of those things, those are really driven um, not only by internal factors, but external factors. And so when you are goal setting, um, it's real important to say, I'm going to do these things, I'm going to do X, Y, and Z, and make it so that... Um, it's not just, I'm gonna get a score of 25 on the flat. Because the judge that day might be cranky and so the best score might be a 32 in your division, but on a different day, a different judge might have given you a 21. So you have to know that you rode well, that your transitions were good and proper, and all of those things. And so to that end, I would um, tell you that when you're looking to do goals, 
try to, as much as possible, set them based on factors that aren't determined by other people, if that makes sense. No questions? Anybody watching? Lots of people watching. Okay. Some people I know, some people I don't. Excellent. So then you go into the top three goals. And again, you can see it says 2020. Um, so I always try to pick three goals, personal, professional, and um, business goals. Um, professional being my writing, um, business being the two uh, businesses that we run. And what you want to do is you want to sort of say what your top goal is and then what are potential obstacles to that goal and what you're going to do when you reach them. And um, I have several friends who are always um, kid me about my goal setting and they're like, it's great to plan, but your plans never happen. And um, sometimes they're right, but at least I have an idea of some things that might go right or might go wrong and how I would deal with them. And so I think it's real important so that when you're thinking about goals, that you just don't get stuck if you have a problem that you try to find a workaround. Um, Neil said we have a question. So Devin Trethery, I might be getting her last name, not quite right, but I know who she is. How often do you find yourself adding to these lists or reflecting on your achievements? I try to do it at least quarterly. Um, to, to be real honest, I do it a lot when I'm um, going to overseas because I have downtime when nobody, the phone's not ringing. Um, so for me, that's a great quiet time um, to, to reflect on it. And, um, and I think if you can at least look at it quarterly, that's great. Um, some people look at it monthly. Um, I find that I get distracted and I don't have time to do it monthly. But if you can look at it quarterly, that's um, real important. And that goes back to that Harvard study um, where they found that if you wrote down your goals, you're much more likely to attain them. Um, the same thing is true as if you review them um, because you can find out if you're on track, tracking, um, if your mission is still important. And the other thing I would tell you is um, I'm a big fan of uh, podcasts and TED Talks and then I get on to different speakers and um, I've been listening to a lot of Brene Brown and a lot of Simon Sinek and Simon Sinek is big on finding your why, finding out why you do what you do and and I think it's real important to know why you're doing what you're doing and I think the basic premise doesn't doesn't really change and for example, for us, for selling horses, um, people have often said, oh, well, Courtney can sell any horse to anybody. And, and that's really not true, and that's not really how we look at things. We really want the horses to sell themselves. We really want to tell um, people everything about the animals so that they can make the decision that works best for them. And our goal is to make other people's dreams come true. Like that is really what excites us. It's what gets us up in the morning. It, it's what um, helps us through the hard times. And I can tell you that when people write me and tell me how happy they are with their horses or that they've achieved a milestone that they've been working towards, that that's very exciting for me. And so to that end, I think it's real important to know why you're doing what you're doing. Um, I think a lot of people get stuck on everybody else is doing this and therefore I have to do it and that's important to me. Um, if you can know your why, you can make decisions based on that and it doesn't have to be anybody else's why, it just has to be your why. So um, hopefully that answered your question, Devin. Any other questions? We got a thumbs up float by from somebody, but. Excellent, okay. <laughs> so um, strategies to dealing with problems and this goes to being resilient. Um, I think sometimes it's very easy to get stuck. Devin but, says thank you. Oh, you're welcome, Devin. Um, but it's very easy to get stuck and, and we all have problems and we all have to try to figure out workarounds. And to that end, use the resources that you have. I've been um, very fortunate in my life to have people around me that I could ask for help. And I think most people want to help. And to that end, if you've got someone in your life and you're having trouble and you don't know where to turn, even if you know them tangentially through someone else, most people, if you are very honest and, and sort of authentic and come up to them and say, hey, look, I'm struggling with this. You seem to be real, have a handle on this and really good at this. 
how can you help me, you know, can you give me some ideas? Um, have you ever had this challenge yourself? How did you deal with it? Um, I think most people will deal with that, but I think asking for help um, helps you be resilient and helps you um, try to find ways to get over the obstacles and have a strategy. Neil says we have another question. Chelsea Olson says, do you find that noting goals throughout your schedule calendar helps focus? Does that help prioritize upcoming activities and decisions? Um, yes and no. Um, I would tell you sometimes, um, for example, I came down, I'll, I'll just take my personal experience. I came down to Aiken this year um, with six horses that I thought would all be going to the preliminary um, by the end of the season. And so to that end, we worked with the horses, they were going along. Um, my black mare, that is a homebred hunting stars, unfortunately um, banged her leg at one point, and so we were hoping that she was going to go preliminary at sporting days in early February, but that didn't happen because she banged her leg. And then I was thinking, oh, I'll take her to Paradise, um, and that's usually an okay, you know, preliminary course, and I thought the cross country was quite beefy, and so I took her there in the training, and she won that. And then I was going to do um, the prelim at Sporting Days again, but I had too many horses entered, and so that didn't work. And so she just made her move up at Pine Top. And I think if I um, had really stuck to the idea of my goal is that she has to be going preliminary by the end of the season, and my goal is that she has to go preliminary at Paradise, that I would have um, that would have been to the detriment of her. And so I think. To some extent, yes, it's helpful to have goals on schedules and to see where you are, but I also think you have to know um, that goals are going to evolve and things are going to happen and, um, you know, things outside your own ability will happen. It's like COVID. You know, this has been going on for a year. We're almost on a year of training tip Tuesdays, and if you had told me that this is what would have happened, nobody would have ever had it in their mind that this would have happened. Um, and so things evolve and things change and, and, and I think that's the big thing. But I do think it's important to keep them in your mind's eye, but then to sort of push, you know, to have the goal, but then to say, okay, here's the strategy to get there and I'm gonna focus on the strategy. And then based on the strategy, I'm gonna um, work backwards and see where it ends up. So hopefully that answers your question. If not, ask me again. Any other questions? Not yet. Okay. So um, moving along. So um, what happens if your goal becomes unimportant to you? You know, what happens if, for example, um, something happens in your personal life that all of a sudden it, ta it shifts your focus? Um, I unfortunately have a couple of friends that are dealing with major health crises. And so their goals have shifted majorly. And so what do you do then? Um, and, and how do you deal with the despair, for lack of a better word, of not reaching your goals? You know, there have been times when I've been hurt and, you know, I had great plans and I got hurt and all of a sudden those plans went out the window. And how do you deal with that? And I guess, someone asked me this, this is why I'm bringing this up. Um, I guess what I would say is, you know, take some time to be sad about that. You know, take some time to reflect on the fact that sometimes things aren't going to work the way you want them to work. And um, usually, as much as I don't like the saying, everything does happen for a reason. And you can, um, you can see the positive in things and you can look for the bright side. And, and again, looking at COVID, um, you know, it's been extraordinarily hard for a lot of people. And a lot of people have been um, horribly affected by it. Um, and and to, to that end, there's no way around that. Um, you know, I've been very fortunate that most of the people that are in my inner circle haven't really been that affected by it. Um, we've been able to survive and keep going. Um, and it's created 
some opportunities for us. But I think you have to, you know, you have to sort of swallow the fact that sometimes things make you, situations and circumstances change, and so you have to be able to to resolve to to appreciate where you are, and that maybe something that was very important to you is going to happen right now. So, um, to that end. Devin has another question. Oh, Devin, sure. Devin, what do you do if you have a goal that is really important to you but seems unachievable? Okay, well, let's take going to Kentucky for me. So, I always had the goal of going to Kentucky um, ever since I was a, a wee child. Um, and so, I, you know, I can walk you through that, but we, um, since I was, you know, 13, 14, I would tell you that I wanted to go to Kentucky. So, you know, bought our first horse, had great plans, you know, like every teenager, everything's going to work out, this horse is going to go to Kentucky. But it turned out that um, the horse wasn't sound, had a former bow tendon that I didn't appreciate, you know, okay, so that one didn't work. Then um, went, bought another horse, loaned out to my mother. Um, that horse was an amazing athlete, probably had kissing spine. side street instead of going straight and then you're gonna go down another road and so um, the thing I would say is as you're working to get to this attainable unattainable goal keep trying to find the skill sets that are going to help you reach them so that that would be what I would say I don't know if that makes sense but that's what I would say is that you've got to keep sort of coming at it from different directions and to use the resources of the people that surround you and say, look, you know, this is my goal and how do I, how would you think you could get there? Because sometimes people will say things to you just really offhandedly and um, two years down the road, you're gonna be like, I'm gonna use that bit of information because that's really good information. So I hope that's helpful. Um, any other questions? No, but you might wanna point out that the mayor who got hurt was Who's a Star's mom. Oh yeah, she was Who's a Star mom, sorry. So, yeah, so she started our breeding program. Sorry about that. Um, so I thought that was clear. But anyway, yeah, so anyway, so she, her getting hurt led us to breeding and um, and led us to Who's the Star and to all the homebreds we have, including our River Star, um, who's hopefully going to be our second homebred to go to Kentucky in a few years. Um, so, so that's the thing. I mean, if a goal is important to you, 
you just have to keep chipping away at it. You know, you don't you you don't climb Mount Everest by going to base camp and hoping for the best. You go to Mount Everest and you know after you've climbed you know all the mountains in North America and then you've gone and climbed some of the other big mountains and you train and you you know understand what it is like to be without oxygen and you know you do all of the things um i have read a little bit about climbing mount everest um <laughs> but not a lot and so but like all of those things like you don't people just think oh you know you get to kentucky because you've got a great horse well you get to kentucky because you have a great horse and you get to kentucky because you put the work in um i think it's one of the things a, a lot of people don't know about the olympics and the olympic movement is there are sports in the Olympics that are defined as being youth sports. Um, gymnastics and ice skating, for example, running um, are sort of youth sports. And then there are a whole other category of sports called lifetime sports, where you learn um, skills through your lifetime that make you better athletes. Um, and that would be things like riding and sailing. Um, those are sports that are lifetime sports and generally you know, the people that are really good at it are people that are older. And so um, to that end, you know, I think the thing is that the great thing about our sport is you, you never can have to stop learning. Um, and to the end, Devin, the other point I would make is um, don't be afraid of trying something really radically different. You know, don't be afraid of, of trying change. And like I had said on the, the front sheet, don't be afraid of failing. I know a lot of the girls with um, I often say to them I want you to fail I you know like you're here to learn and I know you're gonna make mistakes and that's fine but I also want you to fail like I want you to make a decision have it not work out and figure out why it didn't work out because those are the times you learn um, and oftentimes people have said uh, you, you learn more from the mound where you had to stop then oh ow um, <laughs> that was flowers head on the table um, you learn more from a failed experiment than you do from um, a successful one. Any other questions? No, just different people scrolling by. Okay, so um, so then we, we talk about goals and we talk about things and, and all the things. And then um, strategies to get there. And then one of the things, and this goes back to finding your, your why, is what or who do you value? Um, because I think it's, it's always hard when you're struggling and if you have goals you're gonna struggle and if you are alive I guess you're gonna struggle but you know to focus on the things that are important to you because those things don't usually change um, honesty is real important to me um, transparency uh, reliability uh, resilience uh, responsibility those are all things that are really really um, important to me and um, to that end, I will do lots of loyalty. Um, those are all things that I find um, that I'm really willing to back up. And so when you find yourself um, in a situation where the, your values are being met, I think that's also sometimes where you can get a little bit sticky in terms of you know saying, is this really what I want? And, and that provides you with some time for, for reflection. Um, so I think with goal setting, the, the key is to find something you're passionate about or that's important to you. Uh, find a strategy. Realize what some of the obstacles to that strategy are going to be. Um, try to deal with it. And then um, connect with what you value. So moving on. Um, then we go into missions, mission statements. Um, and these goes, oh, 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 hi dogs. Um, and those, those work on, again, um, your why. You know, why is this important to, to what you do? Um, you know, and I have lots of friends who are mothers and um, fathers. And for them, you know, a lot of times, hey, hey, their mission is to be, you know, is, is their goal is to provide you know the education and the love for their children to be you know responsible adults 
you know, and good members of society. And so that's really important to them. And, you know, I don't think there's a higher calling if you're a parent. Um, you know, I am, I am not a parent, so I don't know that for a fact, but I, I'm always, um, hey, hey, um, I'm always amazed by the job that parents do. So I think you need to know what's your mission. Like what, what, what are you trying to do? Um, and to that, to that end, you know, does your, does your work match up with your mission? Because I know, um, you know, a lot of people are unhappy with their work and I think that that's not a great way to be. And so if you can find something that you can do that supports what um, is important to you and your mission, I think that's a great thing. So um, hopefully that makes sense. Do we have another question? No, uh, Devin said thank you. Devin's good at saying thank you. Um, okay, so then, then we go on to when I have money goals. Um, and a lot of times money is one of those things that people say, oh, if I only had so much money, I could do X, Y, and Z. And to some extent, that's, that's true. Um, you know, you hope that, that your world doesn't revolve around um, cash flow, but to some extent it does. And so, um, you know, for us, that was, that was having a farm, and then it was having um, a place down in Aiken, which we were able to do, and then, you know, things along those lines, like fixing the driveway or putting a new roof on the barn. And it doesn't have to be glamorous, but that's, you know, pie in the sky stuff. Um, so that's, that's one thing. And then every year I like to do this as well. Things I would have changed. Um, because I think it's, it's great to reflect on your goals and undoubtedly it's good to keep the focus. It's, it's great to sort of tick the boxes of saying, all right, like, you know, 10 years I wanted to do this and I did it and that's fantastic. Um, but ultimately too, there are things that you would have wanted to change, you know, relationships that um, got affected that you, you know, would, would have liked to have maybe changed. Um, ways that you ran your business that if you'd known another piece of information you would have done gone down a different road and I think that's important to reflect on because if year by year by year by year you keep thinking seeing the same things that you would have changed then maybe that presents you with an opportunity to create a different goal and to say okay well maybe I need to work on this as a goal of mine uh, because obviously I keep wanting to change it to have a different result Yes, so you have a comment, not a question, but Whitney Roche says, thank you for doing this. Ah, thanks, Whitney. Um, all right. Um, and then the last thing is things I want to do better. Um, and again, um, you know, going back to, to me, I know that, you know, in my dealings, sometimes um, I can be, people think I can be short or abrupt and it's not. I have no desire to be like that because I will happily give my time um, and it's usually because I'm distracted or I have other things on my plate and so that's for me something that I personally have worked on um, that I want to be better at um, and be more available to people so um, you know you try to you try to put those things out another thing that um, you know Devin asked what about big you know, big goals. Um, I would tell you, Devin, that there are a lot of times that um, people have told me goals or I've read about people who have made huge goals and, you know, we're told, uh, that'll never happen. You know, that's not going to happen. That's, 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 that's not, you know, how, how come you think you're going to do that? In fact, I think my husband is laughing because you know, one of my goals when we originally met, what was that, 35 years ago? Mm -hmm. 30 years ago? 34. 34 years ago. Um, and we were dating, and I was like, well, I want to ride internationally, and I want to ride on the teams. And he's like, well, what makes you think you're going to do that? And Because you've never done it before. And I said, well, I, I never walked before I, you know, before either, and I figured that one out. So I would say if you can dream it, you can back away from it and you can say, okay, well, these are the ways I'm going to do it. And you may have to keep trying to, like I said, figure out how it's going to work, but, but you can do that. And so to that, 
and um, anybody who's been around me um, knows I carry books with me um, wherever I go and um, I'm notorious for, for doing it um, when I when I take trips um, and so like this is this is one for clients looking for horses um, I have another one for my professional goals and um, I just didn't pull it out today but um, talking about you know what my goals are um, you know my goal is to, to try to get on a team and to do that I figured out you know how many horses I need and where those horses need to come from and um, some will come from our breeding program and some will come domestically and some will come from the international horses and how we're going to finance them and where we're going to be and um, you know I'm not sure all the plans will work but that's sort of the idea and that you know we've talked to a few people who have uh, ridden internationally and, and gotten some ideas from them um, I'm sort of approaching it differently than, than a lot of people um, because my primary business is sales um, but that it's it's sometimes easier to, to take one of these drivers than to have a whole bunch of paper with you um, but having said that having the paper I have um, what probably four notebooks full of goal sheets that you know dating for uh, 30 25 30 years um, and so it's kind of fun to go back and look at those and, and see what those things are about Questions. We have some more comments. Oh, comments. Robin King says, thank you, Courtney, for putting all this into word. I think it's also important to say that following dreams is very rare. Lisa Brewer says, this is my favorite of Courtney Cooper videos I have seen full of good stuff, exclamation point. Super. Um, so, you know, I, I would just say that that for me, those are all important things for me. Um, the other thing I would tell you is... Um, having mentors is is real important um, and and sometimes the people that you mentor um, uh, that your mentees if you want to call them that um, come back and share things with you uh, you know I um, had Emily Hamill who worked for me for a couple of years come by the other day to look at a horse for a client and we were just talking and I am so proud of her because she's going to Kentucky this year and um, knock on wood, knock on metal, um, and I'm so excited for her because she's worked so hard to get there, and, and she's supposed to go last year with COVID, and that didn't happen, and long story short, I'm so excited for her, and we were just talking about it, and it, it's really exciting to see what she's doing now, and uh, with her own podcast and, and her own business, and so, you know, we were talking about some business ideas back and forth, so that was, that was real exciting, and so, you know, don't discount the people that you help along the way because sometimes they you know have have done different things um the other thing i would say is i've been really blessed with my partners overseas because they um, are great guys to work with and we think of a lot of things very similarly um but because they've grown up in a different country than me and they've grown up in a different environment for horses than me um and they have different feelings with their clients and their owners and their breeders and and their sources for horses it's been really enlightening and so you know seek out those relationships and and talk to people i think people in general um are, are genuine and want to help and and i think everybody seeks connection and i think that that sometimes gets lost um you know people are afraid to ask don't be afraid to ask what's the worst thing that happens is that you know someone says that they're they don't want to they don't want to help and if that's the case that's fine um so i think that's it but if you guys have questions because um i know sometimes people think of questions um i thought we'd just walk through the barn and say hello to some of the horses um and then i'm also happy like i said to send this out um to people if they're interested and walk them through it um just shoot me um a message or put down um, a message down in the notes below and I'll get uh, notified for that um, and then we can go from that um, next week I think what we want to cover is I've been asked to cover um, how to leg up a horse that um, has not been blessed to be in the sunny south um, and I think I'll be able to do that really well um, my husband's horse um, who is um, who's the star because he's now been retired from the five star competition um, and is going to be going novice and maybe training this year. 
um, with my husband. He is home and his hair is long and his mane is long and he's a muddy mess and he hasn't worked since November. Um, we can talk about him. Um, he's actually an older horse obviously now and so um, we can talk about how, how to bring back horses, how to bring back riders to be successful and hopefully keep you injury free. Um, so let's walk through the barn and like I said, if anybody has questions, um, we're happy to talk about them. Anybody else have questions here? Mm, I don't think so. Okay. Lots of sunlight and glare, so. So there you go. Now we're going into the darkness. So here's Cora working away. Um, and then that's our lovely mare. That's Hunting Stars, who um, maybe we'll go see her outside. She, uh, like I said, she just did her first preliminary. She was really, really good. Um, we have uh, first class here who's ready to go jump some jumps. Um, we have our nice young horse here, um, Future Hero. This is one of our imported horses um, that's for sale um, by Future Fred. Lisa Brewer wants to know if hair is long, money mess. Wouldn't sure if you're talking about the husband or the horse. Oh, no, the horse, the husband has no hair. Um, as my hair has gotten longer, his hair has gotten much shorter. I've it's, been doing my own haircuts, so. Uh, with clippers. With clippers. So, um, yeah, so he's gone real short. Um, so who do we have over here? Oh, speaking of a horse, Devin, this one's for you. This is a horse that should have been, could have been, um, my first team horse, but unfortunately wasn't because he kept getting injured. Um, if anybody's been around for a very long time, this is a, a lovely, lovely horse called Havasu Canyon, who um, was everything you'd want an American thoroughbred to be. Light on his feet, good in the flat work, really brave cross country, just a lovely, lovely horse. Um, and unfortunately, um, didn't make it. But again, when you talk about things happening for a reason and um, like I would never want him to be hurt. Um, hi, I know you know that I have some more. Um, he led us to believe, led us to meet some of our um, favorite friends, uh, Tina and Paul Allaire, and um, unfortunately Paul passed. Um, but Tina has remained a very good friend and um, both personal and professional and um, we couldn't have done some of the things we've done without them, and um, so we're always grateful um, to this old man. Um, so that's sometimes talking about how things change your perspective and, and how to keep moving forward. And then who do we have down here? Oh, we have the FPI MP, stall. We're very excited about that. Um, we have uh, David River and TikTok headed to uh, the two star this this um, weekend, so that'll be exciting. And then this is another horse. Um, this is Debonair, South Star Debonair, who's waiting for his ride um, this weekend. Do you know what happens? Oh, you don't. That's so sad, you'll have to learn. So anyway, so that's us signing off. Um, any other questions, any other thoughts? No. From anybody? Thank you guys for tuning in. I hope it was helpful and useful. Uh, if you have any questions, let me know. And we look forward to catching up with you soon. All the best.